Hey everyone, today I am continuing my list of 10 things with 10 more little hacks for flame workers. Sometimes it's the little things that make all the difference, and I'm willing to bet that at least one thing on this list will improve your flame working workflow significantly. So let's get started. I would estimate that three out of four flame workers use a Bic lighter like this one to light their torch. After all, they're cheap and almost everyone has them readily available. I have always advocated using flint strikers instead, but for some reason it's difficult for some people to learn to use them. But Bic lighters are very dangerous. Have you ever seen one explode? Not good. These things are full of pressurized butane, and you would not want to have one in your pocket or on your bench top if that happened. Fortunately, there is an alternative. Rechargeable electric arc lighters. The type I use has a long, flexible neck and creates a small, persistent spark that is ideal for lighting your torch. They last for years and are completely safe unless you decide that it would be funny to zap your neighbor like a mini taser. I don't recommend you do that. But how will I open my beers, you may ask? Well, that is what jacks are for. Cheers. So get yourself one of these today. There's a link in the description below to one of the ones that I like. Everyone knows how gross and fragile blow hose mouthpieces are. The little yellow ones don't last long. I'm always crushing those because I hold them in my teeth while trying to talk while I work. I've tried other types, including 3D printed mouthpieces, but they never last long. By far, the most durable and comfortable mouthpiece isn't a mouthpiece at all. It's a simple plastic barbed elbow made for connecting plastic tubing. I recommend getting the quarter inch size and fitting it into 5 8 inch latex hose. The fit is snug enough to hold and yet is very easy to insert and remove. The right angle bend takes the pressure off both the hose and your mouth. And they are very, very tough. The latex hose will wear out long before the nylon elbow. I still use the one that I have had on my blow hose now after almost two years of heavy use. As you can see, I chew on it extensively, but it still works perfectly. You can buy these at your local Home Depot or Lowe's or order them on Amazon. There's a link in the description below. Have you ever accidentally bumped into handles sticking out of the kiln? Or worse, bumped into somebody else's handle and knocked their work out of the kiln? In a busy, crowded studio, this can be an annoying problem. Well, my dear friend Salt taught me a cool trick to help reduce this problem. Colored pipe cleaners. You simply tie the glass handle to the support bar of your kiln with the pipe cleaner. The bright color alerts everyone to the presence of the clear handle. It's very quick and easy to secure, and then untie the handle when you are ready to go back to work. I bought orange ones because they are easy to see, but they also come in different colors. If you have multiple artists working out of the same kiln, you can color code the handles so you always know which handles are yours. Best of all, pipe cleaners are extremely cheap. You can buy a pack of 100 for about $7, and that will last you for years. Link in the description below. This next tip comes as a suggestion from Boro Wizard. Thank you, Boro Wizard. Flame workers are always working around hot stuff. The flame itself is 4,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Glass that is 1,000 degrees looks no different from glass that is at room temperature. 
You get burned once or twice and you start developing habits that prevent it from happening again. However, every flame worker eventually gets burned. It's a rite of passage for beginners and an inevitable eventuality for everybody else. And burns suck. They are extremely painful and can be temporarily debilitating. So a treatment for burns should always be available as an essential part of your shop first aid kit. The best treatment I have found is silver colloidal cream or gel. Applied immediately to a burn, the cream or gel immediately soothes the pain and promotes healing. No glass shop should be without it. If you get burned, stop working and attend to it immediately. Do not try to work through the pain. You'll only set yourself up for a worse injury. Apply the Silvadine cream liberally to the burned area and then cover it with a sterile bandage. Take a few minutes off to recover. If you're severely burned, treat the burn with Silvadine and then seek medical help. The popular brand name is Silvadine, but it's available under other brand names on Amazon. I've linked to a couple of them in the description below. This next tip comes from Intention Glass. Thank you, Intention Glass. This is a laser temperature gun. It's useful for measuring not only the temperature of your kiln, but for the temperature of your piece. Just aim and pull the trigger, and you get an instant and accurate readout of the surface temperature of whatever it is you aimed at. Just buy one. They're pretty reasonable. I bought this one for around $30. You'll find endless situations where you can use it. In fact, we will use it to demonstrate the next hack on today's list. There are many different kinds, but try to find the ones that will measure over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit accurately. Many only go up to seven or eight hundred degrees. I bought this one that goes up to 1382 Fahrenheit. It is linked in the description below. What list of life hacks would be complete without a clever application for aluminum foil? This tip was first suggested to me by Salt Glass years ago and has proven to be a very handy trick. Stuffing your kiln doors with aluminum foil. Some of the best glass blowers I've worked with, Salt, Banjo, and Buck, to name three, often use foil to stuff their kiln doors. Here's why. The temperature readout on your controller does not tell the whole story when it comes to the temperature inside your kiln. The thermocouple that measures the temperature is situated high on the back kiln wall. That would be the hottest part of the kiln. But the temperature in other parts of the kiln can vary widely, especially near the door. Because most of us work with the access doors at least partially open, Cool outside air mixes with the heated air inside the kiln, resulting in lower temperatures near the door. Testing the temperature with our handy temperature gun, we see that the actual temperature near the door is only about 800, maybe 850 degrees Fahrenheit. Borosilicate glass is pretty tolerant of these sorts of temperature variances, until it isn't. There are times when you want to be sure your project is entirely hot, but how can you do this with the doors open? Answer? Stuff the opening with aluminum foil. The foil helps to block cool outside air from mixing with the hot air inside the kiln near the door, reducing stress on the glass that is in that region of the kiln. This is an extremely cost-effective way to stabilize the temperature of objects that are near the door. The foil can be molded into nearly any shape. You can cut slits in the foil to fit around handles or tear it into specific sizes or fit into specific spaces. I usually fold up sheets to be a bit wider than the door opening so I can wedge them into place. Furthermore, the foil does not retain heat well, so it's easy to grab it by a corner and remove it when necessary. Just make a new one when the old one gets too torn up or wrinkled or dirty. I have not posted a link in the description below for obvious reasons. It is said that the eyes are the windows to the soul. Anyone who has ever sculpted animals or human figures has run up against the problem of making eyes that are believable 
and express character in even some small way. If you look at most glass figures or animals, you'll notice that the eyes are usually just vague indentations or crudely sculpted dots. If only there was a tool that would make eyes quickly and efficiently. I have used nail punches like these for eyes for many years, but I've always been frustrated by the lack of size variation. So recently, I started using brass tubes. I bought this set of six different sizes, two millimeters to seven millimeters, on Amazon for only nine dollars. The brass tubes are open on both ends, so I left one end round and squashed the other end to get a more oval shape. And voila, 12 different eye shapes. Making eyes with the tool is simple. Add a dab of glass in the appropriate size, heat the end, and indent with the tool. A tungsten pick can be used to enhance the corners of the eyes. And there are many other textures that are possible using this simple homemade tool. There's a link in the description below for these brass tubes. This next tip comes from Dispersion Glass. Thank you, Dispersion Glass. I am hesitant to admit that I have cut small chunks of silver off my sheet for many years using my glass shears. You should never do this. Tin snips work better but they're big and they're awkward, and they're not designed to remove tiny pieces from a sheet. Instead, buy a jeweler's punch like this one. It effortlessly makes small chunks of metal off the larger sheet in exactly the size you need for fuming. There are many different kinds. Just make sure you get one designed for metal. For some reason, Amazon lists theirs alongside punches intended for leather, and those won't help you. Link in the description. This next tip is strictly old school. It was in common use in glass studios for many years, but it pretty much gets overlooked these days. I'm talking about ceramic fiber blanket. I always have small pieces of fiber blanket around. I use them for many purposes. To slow cool a piece I am crashing, to set a hot piece on so it's not shocked by the cold bench top, or even to stuff open holes so I can get air pressure while working on a piece. Fiber blanket is cheap and easy to find. Amazon has dozens of brands available. The problem is, is that traditional fiber blanket has asbestos in it. And that, of course, is a big no-no. But Aero Springs has sold a non-toxic fiber blanket for many years that's comparable in price to traditional ceramic fiber blanket and works just as well. This stuff is so non-toxic, you can actually eat it. But I don't recommend you do that. <laughs> I do recommend having a few sheets around the studio. There's a link to Aero Springs in the description. The last item on today's list is another solution for busy studios with multiple workers. We glass artists have highly varied tastes when it comes to music. It's not uncommon to have a Willie Nelson fan working right next to a fan of death metal. Audio wars can be mitigated by having an arrangement where the access to the shop stereo is fairly divided. But each worker still has to tolerate music that they may not like for a significant portion of their workday. In my studio, the shop stereo has disappeared, 
replaced by individual headphones. But headphones come with their own set of limitations. Noise-canceling headphones deafen the user to his surroundings unless he takes the headphones off. I would argue that maintaining at least some audio awareness is an important safety measure. Earbuds work well, but like many of you, I dislike objects inserted inside my ears. After a time, it's irritating, and they eventually get sort of disgusting, especially in people like me with waxy ear canals. So for me, the ideal solution is bone induction headphones like these. These type of headphones do not block exterior sounds, so you can still hear what is going on around you. But the bone induction technology still creates an excellent private music experience. And if you are working alone and don't need to interact with anyone else, you can still use earplugs to create the equivalent of noise-canceling headphones. From the standpoint of comfort and courtesy, bone induction headphones are the best way to go. I prefer the Shox brand. There's a link in the description below. And there you have it. 10 little hacks for flame workers. I'm certain that there are many more out there, so if you have a suggestion for the next 10 hacks video, please email me at the address in the description below. If I use your suggestion, I'll credit you in the video. As always, please like this video and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.